Okay, welcome back everybody. We are going to see what this effect does to our two different versions of the letters here. Okay, so this one is anti-aliased, this one is not, so it's just square pixels. And I did the two L's just so we can get kind of a little test of how it's going to look. And I don't want to do this before I committed to everything and then realized, yeah, you know what? It doesn't look right. The effect doesn't look right. And I went in and did all the details to all the letters. That would just be a waste of time. So we might as well check it ahead of time. Okay, so let's see. The first thing I think I want to do is change the color. And I want to make it something more like this kind of gold color here. I'm going to get my paint bucket tool, make sure I'm on the right group here on the L, and let's go ahead and select, I'm just going to select it from here, make this easy on myself, and I don't want to select the highlight, the very lightest, I don't want to select the very darkest, I want to select something in between. Maybe something like that, we'll see, let's dump it in, and because this is pixelated here, it just filled the whole thing. Uh, no problem. It just filled in the exact pixels. Okay, let's go to this one and see how it fills it in. Okay. So when I go to my anti-aliased one, it kind of messes it and makes it pixelated. That is not what I want. So here's what I need to do. I need to paint it in. And the way I'm going to do that is it's going to be a little more complicated, okay? So this might be a little tricky, but I'm going to lock my transparent pixels. So what that means is, okay, if I turn this off, on this layer, on this group here, this layer, this is a layer, there's no pixels, and then there's black pixels, you know, or like, or colored. There's, there's, and there's some are kind of see-through, and if I zoom in on the anti-alias, you can see how some of them are a little bit transparent, and that's how it creates that little anti-alias fading blending effect, okay? I want to lock the transparency. So I'm going to lock the transparent pixels. Now what that means though is I can no longer mess with like uh, or erase my L. If I try to erase, it's going to fill it in with a color. See here? Because I locked the transparency and it can no longer do that. So it's actually filling it in with a back color uh, on the, the palette back there. So I don't want to erase anymore. Not while it's locked. Okay, not while it's locked. But what I do want to do is color it in. So I'm going to get my, I'll just get the brush tool. I'm going to have it at 100%. And I'm going to color in this gold color here. And I'm just going to get it on the L for now. Okay, now let me zoom in here. And when I paint it this way, as opposed to the paint bucket, it is going to keep my anti-alias lines. Okay, it's going to keep the ones that are kind of blending and all that. Okay, so again, I'm just doing this effect here. We're just going to try it on, see how it looks in the L before I got to everything else. So, okay, there we go. got my two. Okay, so there I go. I've got my two painted up. And let's just start with this one here. And to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an effect on it using this FX button down here. So I'm on the correct layer with the L on it. I'm going to go to this. And I'm going to want to bevel and emboss. So let's go ahead and do that. And it brings up a layer style window. And you can see it did something to this, okay, and bevel and emboss. So now I want to adjust it so I can get this little peak here and see how it works. Okay, so let's see. Let's just click some of the different things here. Texture, I don't want to add a texture. That's pretty cool, though. But I don't want to add a texture. I don't want to contour either. Let's just stick with this here. And an inner bevel as opposed to an outer bevel, which would go out of it. And then there's the emboss, which would be like um, bringing it in like a relief, I guess, would be the best way to think about that. And I don't want that. I want the inner bevel. So let's see. Now I'm going to mess with the depth. And you can see here that it makes it larger, smaller. 
size. So you see here, I can kind of adjust it and bring it to a peak there. So that's good. Let's see what the depth does in relation to that. Okay, interesting. Soften, not soften. We want it pretty chiseled. So something that's going to help here is this right here, where it says technique. This is where it's really going to kind of change things. Chisel soft and chisel hard. Okay, you can't see much of a difference here, but let's try chisel soft first and see how this looks. Okay, so let's kind of mess with it here. And I'm going to need to mess with the lighting for sure. Okay, the depth is how deep the chisel is. Size is how big it is. So I just want to bring it to the peak right there. Okay, soften. I don't want to soften it yet if I am going to soften it. But I do want to mess with the lighting. And I can see here the lighting is controlled here down under the shading here. And the angle is coming from the top. And if I look at the Lord of the Rings logo, the light's actually coming from the bottom. So let's adjust this. So that's adjusted right here. I'm going to bring that down so it's coming from below like so. And it also looks like it's coming from the left side. No, I'm sorry. I don't know my left and right. My right side. There we go. So I'm going to bring the light over from the right side a little bit. And there we go. We're getting something. Okay, getting something. And you can just play with it. I'm just going to kind of move it around and see if I can get a difference that I'm happy with between uh, the different edges there. And let's see. Yep, somewhere. Somewhere. I'm trying to get a distinction between these two. And again, this is my quick kind of Photoshop way to do this. I am sure they used more complicated things than me. 3D sculpted and all that possibly, but I think we can get a decent looking effect like with just this. Okay, so here we go. We got it to a spot I kind of like. Global light is what we want. Okay, altitude, okay, gloss contour. So here's some different things that will affect the way it's colored. So this, this, I usually keep it the way it is, but it'll use different kind of contour lightings here, which usually don't end up being anything I want. Well, that one's not too bad. see the difference here just playing with it but I think this one's closest so I'll stick with the original one anti-alias let's see if that does anything visible to us not from this distance and then the highlight mode so this is a different way that the lights being uh, applied so dark and multiply there's all sorts of different modes here but I definitely want something that makes it lighter And you kind of just have to play with them to see what they all do. And I like the way it was with lighting. So let's keep with that. You can change the kind of lighting that's coming from it. So right now it's white. So if I wanted to make it red, it'll kind of bring a reddish light to it all. But I definitely don't want that. And you can see the preview over here as well. Um, let's see if a yellow, kind of a lighter yellow light does anything for me here. Not so much. Maybe if I did that in conjunction with making the letters more red, I could get a little effect going that I like, but we'll, we'll keep it. I'll keep a little bit of yellow in there just because. Okay, and opacity. All right, how bright are we going to make this? Decently bright, I think. Okay, then the shadow. How dark we're gonna make the shadows, right? I could bring it all the opacity all the way up or down. We have control over that a bit. Definitely want it to look different enough. So something like that will work for me, I think. Okay, I'm gonna hit okay. Let's zoom out. 
I think we got something going. Maybe not the best, but not bad for a little quick thing. Okay, let's see what that looks like and how much of a difference it makes on my anti-aliased version. Okay, so now that we've done that, I'm going to look at the layers. And you can see that I have this group and I have these effects right here. So here they are, the bevel. I can turn them on, turn them off. And we could add another effect here. There's a uh, drop shadow that we should add as well. But just to see how close we can get it to look like that. But there, there's the effect. And let's go ahead and add the drop shadow while, um, while I thought about it. So I just double clicked on the uh, effects button right here. And I can look down at all these different things you can do. And you can play with all these. But we'll just do a couple here. We'll do the bevel. And then looking for drop shadow way on the bottom. So when I click it on, it turns it on at whatever setting it's at. But I'm still in my uh, options up here, the blending options, actually. What I want to do, if I want to adjust the bevel and boss, I can go here. If I want to adjust the drop shadow, I have to click on that. Okay, so now that I've got my uh, drop shadow selected, I can kind of work on this shadow here. And uh, I have global lighting selected, so it's going to keep the same lighting that I already have set up for good or bad. I'm not sure I necessarily want that. It looks like it's kind of got a little bit of a different kind of shadow going on there to separate it. So let's see, there's the opacity and how dark it is. Okay, and the distance. I can make it way further away. Oh, that brought it off the page. Let's see. There, bring it way up there. So we want it pretty close. The spread. And how much is the shadow spreading out? And the size. So we want to bring it really tight. It's just kind of adding a little shadow around the letters. To help separate them, I think. So they separated it on this edge here and on the bottom edge which isn't which doesn't show up if we use global light so I'm gonna have to take off global light there and kind of switch it up because I want the shadow I think they want to define that uh, lighter edge against white which is why I think they have a little teeny drop shadow there so I'm just gonna bring it in nice and tight Not too far. And I'm going to drop the opacity just a little bit here. Okay. That looks relatively close in terms of the way the shadow is. Okay, I can close this now. And now let's look over here at our layers. Now I've got a drop shadow. And I can turn that on and off independently of the bevel. We can turn all the effects off at once and I can control it there. And you can see it's applied to this layer right above it has the effect on it. Okay, let's do something here. <clears throat> let's see how it looks on. Let's see how it looks on the uh, anti-alias one. Let's turn this off, and I'm going to try something. I'm going to go to. I want to copy my layer style, so I want to try something here. I'm going to go here. And I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to go down. Right, uh, right now, sometimes it matters whether you right click on the icon or the, the name. I need to right click on the name. And I'm going to go to copy layer style. Okay, I want to go to the other version here. Let's make sure I'm on the same layer here. And I want to paste the layer style. So let's go to it here. Let's right click and let's go to paste layer style. And there we go. All right, let's see if it made any difference. Well, the lighting certainly looks different. So let's see what's going on with my bevel and emboss here. So let's go to it. And it looks like it didn't quite match. Uh, the lighting I had. So I'm going to adjust this down, put it down to closer to where I had it on the other one, somewhere around there. Oh, 
Okay, something like that. And let me see. Okay, let's take a look at everything else. I've got the global light selected. And, da, 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 and glass contour, lighten. Okay, it looks like I kept all this other stuff. Just not the position. Okay, I'm going to hit OK there. Wait, actually, no, I want to check everything else. Let's go to the drop shadow. And it does not have global lighting. Okay, that's fine. That's perfect. Okay. Okay, so that's perfect. Okay, so let's look at them compared. Compare them and see. Get them loosely in the same spot here. Haha, <laughs> just painted. Okay, here we go. Well, this one does look a little softer. This one looks a little more chiseled. As expected, if this one's anti-aliased, it's going to soften up those lines. And let's see from a distance which one looks better. Well, the chiseled one definitely has a lot more going on, but it definitely doesn't match the uh, the text up here. It's, it's too chiseled. So I think... But you do get a lot of nice textures with it. But I do think the uh, anti-aliased one looks a bit better. Kind of smooths it out a little bit. And uh, to be fair, we could probably play with it here. So let's check out the bevel. I'm going to go back to the uh, non-anti-aliased one. And let's see if I can soften it up a little bit. So I'm going to go here. And I'm just softening up. Went to the layer style again. And I'm just trying to soften it up. But I think it kind of so it makes it all look blurry. Which isn't exactly what I think I'd want. It just looks blurry, and I think I would want it to look sharp in areas and not in others. We can also check, well, this is going to make it worse, <laughs> chisel hard. No, I didn't really do anything. Smooth. Yeah, not. we don't want smooth, not for this. Chisel soft. Direction, let's try this. Interesting. I'm going to change the direction of the chisel. But, okay, that's fine. Up. And soften doesn't really do what I want. And obviously we already did the size. I already have that adjusted. So I'll leave that where it was. So I think I'm going to cancel this. Just let it be how it was. But for this, I think I would go forward to make it more like the Lord of the Rings logo. I'm going to go forward with the anti-aliased one. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my effects. Uh, let's see, here we go. I'll save this one here. File. Save. Let's go to this one here. And I'm going to turn off the effects. And I'm going to continue to roughen up all the letters, kind of copy it as I did. And let's get all the large letters uh, roughed up. And then we'll uh, just slightly touch up the, uh, the small letters. And it's going to have a little different effect on it because they're smaller. But let's go ahead and do that. And we'll come back and then uh, finish it up.